Hi scuba divers, welcome to safe diving. So one of the skills of advanced scuba divers is improving their breathing. It's how they can stay down for longer and basically just make their air last longer. Improving your breathing means that you can do just that, stay down longer and actually enjoy your dive. You can explore the oceans and just go further. As you progress through your diving, you start to learn about your resources. And whichever resource runs low first is what usually ends your dive. To start with, your resources will usually be your air supply, your no decompression limit, dive time and your, your body heat. And to start with, it's usually your air supply that runs out first, unless you're diving somewhere particularly cold and you're diving in just a rubbish rented wetsuit. With enough practice and calm, uh, you're going to stop cursing your pressure gauge for sending you back to the surface and you're going to start hating your bottom timer because you have to be back at the boat in just five minutes time, but you still have plenty of gas left in your tank. It's also better for the group if everyone is just better on air. If there's an incident and you need to share your air supply whilst you're doing a safety stop, then I'd rather have too much air than just not enough. If you surface to discover that another scuba diver is missing, then you can actually help with the preliminary search because you still have plenty of gas left. The guy next to you with only 30 bar left in their tank, they can't go back down. So in all sense, it's just smarter to improve your breathing both for yourself and the entire group. So let's take a look at a few ways that you can improve your breathing. So yoga isn't all about bending and stretching yourself into really odd positions, it actually focuses much more on your breathing than you might think. By spending some quality time to actually focus on your breathing, you're retraining your body how to breathe more effectively. Just sat around just kind of doing our usual day-to-day -day thing, we really don't use our lungs to their full potential. I mean, right now, just take a normal breath in. Now keep going, and even keep going still, there's a lot more room in your lungs than what you use most of the day, and it's actually the small corners of your lungs that are the most efficient. A bit of yoga every single day, and especially the morning of a dive, will work wonders to help you be more aware of what your lungs are actually doing, and you might get a bit more flexible and toned too. So breath control will help you with your skills and your buoyancy as well. Keeping water out of your airway and clearing a flooded mask is much, much easier if you have better control of your lungs and your airways and you can better control your position in the water if you can spend some time holding your breath with empty lungs. It sounds kind of odd, but you don't actually normally practice holding your breath with empty lungs, but it can actually help whilst you're diving. So if you can, find some time to do a little bit of yoga to help you control your breathing better. This is a pretty easy one, just get in the water and go scuba diving. Do you really want to know the real secret of why dive guides and instructors are so darn good at breathing underwater? It's because we have been underwater a lot. I've had to change my log dive time into weeks, days and hours so that the number actually fits into my logbook. The more time that you spend underwater, the more relaxed you'll be and the less air you'll actually need. The more relaxed you are, the less air you're going to need and the more you go diving, the more streamlined your equipment and efficiently you're going to be moving around in the water. By swimming against the current because you didn't see the little signs around you that current was coming or because you were just too far away from the reef where the current is stronger will mean that you're just working harder than you actually need to be. And if your gear is just flapping all over the place and not stowed away neatly in a pocket or a pouch, then you might as well just be diving with a parachute or just towing your buddy behind you because you're just dragging all of that extra weight and just extra resistance. Make your life as easy as possible so you won't be huffing and puffing whilst you're under the water. And the best way to do that is to just go scuba diving. That way you're always looking at your own gear and your other's gear and improving your stuff so you're nice and streamlined. 
So it's hard to lose weight if you never step on the bathroom scales. And the same goes for your breathing rate. If you don't actually know your actual breathing rate for each dive, then you won't know if you're improving or not, and that's where your sack rate can really help. Your sac rate is your surface air consumption rate, and it's effectively how quickly you're breathing, or at least how much gas passes through your lungs. And as the S suggests, it's what you breathe on the surface at sort of one bar of pressure. So as we descend, as the pressure increases, you're actually breathing more and more gas, so it needs to be converted. The easiest way to work out and monitor your sac rate is with a wireless air transmitter. Then basically your dive computer works it all out for you and just spits out a number that will probably be around the 20 something liters per minute. Now you can do it manually if you have a sharp pencil and a calculator, but there are actually website calculators for that, um, just to help you out. Um, just type in your average depth, the air that you used, and um, it will basically spit out your average sac rate. Having a tangible number can actually help you quantify how you're improving and what actions are actually helping, so it's important to actually know your sack rate. There are a few different breathing techniques, so I'll let you do your own research uh, now that you know how to calculate your sack rate to work out which is best for you, but breathing rates basically range from just don't even think about it, just breathe as normal, to actual timed breathing. The important thing is to understand what controls your urge to breathe. Logically, it will be the dwindling amount of oxygen in your bloodstream as your body sort of burns it and uses it. But as clever as the human body is, uh, it actually monitors the concentration of carbon dioxide in your bloodstream to tell you when to breathe. If the CO2 levels in your bloodstream gets too high, then your body starts to scream at you to breathe some fresh air in. So it's important to clear out all of that rubbish CO2 by breathing properly. Personally, I tend to use a four pause six cycle uh, where I take a good four seconds to inhale and fill my lungs with good fresh air, pause for a little bit, and then exhale for six seconds. That long inhale fills every corner of my lungs so that the pause can do its job to give my lungs a good chance to flush out all of that nasty CO2. Now, at this point, it's important to remember that I'm kind of holding my breath, so it's important not to ascend at this point, as you can really hurt yourself. So then I take a longer six seconds to exhale so that I can clear out as much of that dead air space as possible. And the longer you can spend exhaling, the more time that you're not inhaling and using up your valuable gas. One of the best ways to improve your air consumption though has nothing to do with your lungs or even your mindset, but your weight belt. When you first learn to dive, you're normally loaded up with just too much lead, mainly so that you don't go floating off to the surface and you know, hurt yourself, but when you start out, it's quite natural to hold a little bit of a deeper breath of air than normal until you kind of relax into it, so your instructor just puts more lead on you. But afterwards, when you do, relax into it, you don't change the amount of weight on your weight belt. You just add a bit more gas into your BCD, and that's what's hurting your air consumption. The air that you fill your BCD with is perfectly good breathing air, so there's just waste there, but you'll also be adjusting your buoyancy all the time if you're wearing too much lead on your weight belt. Next time you go on a dive, just watch your instructor or your dive guys and see just how often they touch their inflator. I'll wager it's probably less than five times throughout the entire dive, just because they're weighted properly. Wearing too much lead means that you need to add more gas to compensate as you change your depth. So that air volume is going to change as you go up and down, and it's gonna change your buoyancy too, so you're just gonna be wasting a lot of gas. A perfect scuba diver will have just amount of lead on them to get down and stay down, and only have gas in their BCD on the surface. I'll explain how to correctly weight yourself in full in a completely separate video, but in brief, you want to be in the shallow end with near empty cylinders and just keep taking off lead until you can just stay under the surface, and that's how little lead you actually need on your weight belt. 
The best way to improve your gas consumption though is just to switch to a rebreather to be honest, um, but I'll talk about those another day and how they improve your breathing. Um, now that you're really aware of how much you're breathing and how you are doing it, try and spend a little bit of time thinking about you and your equipment when you're under the water and then you can spend more time underwater. It's not just better for your enjoyment so that you can you know, get the most out of your money, but it's actually better for you because just like clearing out that nasty CO2 in your lungs, breathing properly actually cleans out that nasty nitrogen that you've been absorbing and trying to get rid of on that safety stop. And the only way that you can do it is to literally breathe it out properly. So what breathing tips and tricks do you guys use to extend your bottom time? Uh, let's talk about them in the comments below to help the next generation of scuba divers just get better. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to take a couple of seconds to like and subscribe to my channel. And as always, safe diving.